Tito there, she used to ride in the front of the motor coach with me. If you don't put the proper amount in, she'll suck about four ounces of The following obituary appeared in the Pittsburgh Sun Telegraph of September 16, 1958. A great poet died last week in La Sur, France, at the age of 84. He was not a poet's poet. To the people, he was great. They understood him and knew that any verse carrying the byline of Robert W.'s service would be a lilting thing, clear, clean. Power packed, beating out a story with dramatic intensity that made the nerves tingle. And he was no poor Garrett type poet either. His stuff made money hand over fist. One piece alone, the shooting of Dan McGrew, rolled up half a million dollars for him. He lived it up well and also gave a great deal to help others. The only society I like, he once said. is that which is rough and tough, and the tougher the better. That's where you get down to bedrock and meet human people. He found that kind of a society in the Alaska Yukon gold rushes, and he immortalized it. To my good friend Larry Beck, who I never got to meet, but shared this one okay. with me by video. in the lowest down varmint that ever struck the north. Well, I'm talking about dangerous Dan McGrew. And it pleasures me to be able to share with you the way the man from the creek finally done old Dan in. Well, it all happened like this, you see. A bunch of the boys was a whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handled the music box was hitting a jag time tune, and back at the bar, in a solo game, sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching his luck was his light of love, the lady that's known as Lou. When out of the night, which was 50 below, and into the din and the glare, there stumbled this miner, fresh from the creek, dog, dirty, and loaded for bear. He looked like a man that had a foot in the grave, scarcely the strength of a louse. Yet he tilted his poke of dust on the bar, and he called for drinks for the house. Well, there was no one could trace that stranger's face, though we searched our heads for a clue. But we drank to his health, and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. You know there's men. There's men that somehow just grip your eyes and hold them hard like a spell. Such was he, and he looked to me like a man that had lived in hell. With a face most hair and the dreary stare of a dog whose day is done. He watered the whiskey in his glass, and the drops fell one by one. And I got to wondering who he was. We were trying to figure out just what he'd do. I turned my head, and there watching him was a lady that's known as Lou. Then all of a sudden his eyes seemed to rubber around the room, and he seemed to 
in a kind of a daze, till at last that old piano fell in the way of his wandering gaze. The ragtime kid was off uh, having a drink, and there was nobody else on the stool, so that stranger, he stumbles across the room and flops down there like a fool. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat and I watched him sway. And then he clutched the keys with his talon hands. Good Lord, how that man could play. Say, was you ever out in the great alone when the moon was awful clear and the icy mountains hemmed you in with a, a silence you most could hear with only the Timberwolf, as you camp there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark-dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold, while high overhead, green and yellow and red, the north light swept in bars, then you've a hunch what that music meant, hunger and night and the stars. Hunger not of the belly kind that you can banish with your Alaska salmon, quesadillas, bacon, and beans, but the non-hunger of lonely men for a home and all that it means, for a fireside far from the cares that are, four walls with a roof above, oh so crammed by a cozy joy, and crammed and filled with a woman's love. A woman that's dear as all the world and true as heaven is true. Good Lord, how ghastly she looks through her rouge, the lady that's known as Lou. Then all of a sudden that, that music was so soft that you scarce could hear. Ah, but you felt that your life had been looted clean of all that it once held dear, that someone had stolen the woman you loved. And that her love was a devil's lie. That your guts was gone. And the best for you is just crawl away and die. It was a crowning cry that it freeze your blood. And it thrilled you through and through. I guess I'll make her spread misery, said dangerous Dan McGrew. Then that music almost died away. And then it burst like a pent up flood. It seemed to say, repay, repay. My eyes was blind with blood. A thought came back of an ancient wrong, and it stung like a frozen lash. The lust to walk, to kill, to kill. The music stopped with a crash. The stranger turned, and his eyes, they burned in a most peculiar way. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat, and I watched him sway. Now his lips went in in a kind of a grin. Now his voice was calm. Boys, you see, you don't know me. And not one of you gives a damn. But I want to state my words are straight and I bet my folk they're true. One of you is a hound from hell. And that one is Dan McGrew. I ducked my head, the lights went out. Two guns blazed in the dark. A woman scream! <laughs> the lights went up. And two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head, all pumped full of lead, was dangerous Dan McGrew. While the man from the creek lay clutched to the breast of the lady that's known as Lou. Well, them's the simple facts of the case. I guess I ought to know. They say that strangers crazed with hooch. I ain't denying that so. I ain't so wise as all them, uh, lawyer guys. But strictly between us two, the woman that kissed him and pinched his poke was the lady that's known as Lou. The Shooting of Dan McGrew by Robert W. Service. Thank you.